Hi, this is Nancy Hines Glazer with another wonderful Meet the Artist program here at South Orange Maplewood Soma TV. And tonight it's a really special night for me because I'm having some of my great friends here. Uh, and I have Clara Mannheim, Larry Dell, Cynthia Smith Weiss, Michael Frank, some of them who have already been on the show. But it's especially important this year because we're revisiting a very important topic. 2010 Breast Cancer and Artist View at 1978 Arts Center, 1978 Springfield Avenue. How'd I do? Good. Okay. You got so it. Far. Perfect. Okay. And the reason this is important is because we're revisiting again from 2005, and we're talking about survival. And here you are, Clara. I would like for you to start start it out by how you first decided to do this as the curator in 2005, and why you're back again. Well, actually, in, in 2005, uh, I was turned down by a major gallery because they didn't want to get involved with a subject matter, such as breast cancer. And then Michael Frank came to my rescue and saved the day and brought me into the 1978 gallery. And there I met. I knew Cynthia before. I didn't know Larry, but we've become a happy family and we're all involved in this in the survival, of course. But I survived it uh, after knowing him for so long. <laughs> and so. I survived when we made the show travel. And we, we became we a family show. travel, right. We went to a Gilda's Place. Gilda's Place and Wachuck Arts Watch Center. Wachuck Arts Center. And uh, what I think is pretty neat, too, is you also have a number of male artists who are exhibiting as part of Breast Cancer and Artist View. And, and I think that's always interesting to me because everybody's touched everybody's in some way. touched by well, it's not only about breast cancer yep. per se it's about the big picture and cancer does tend to affect everybody in so many ways and I, I know recently for me my dad died of cancer and Clara's grandson died of cancer so it's really you know tragic totally tragic and this is a way to raise consciousness to bring artists together to bring people together and to say you know we're aware we want to help, and we want to we want to do something around this topic, and not just you know s slip it under the rug, so to speak. And it's October. October seventeenth, it opens to the public. October twenty third, which is a Saturday, it opens to as with a reception for the artists, the and we'll have and, and and the public is invited. Everyone's invited, of course. Uh, we'll have refreshments. We'll have music. It's a celebration. It's not going to be depressing in any way. And the show runs uh, through November 28th. And so even if this comes on a little bit after the show, the buzz will be out there. It's already out there. And I think people are now are going to anticipate this, if not every year, you know, every so often. It's just so important. And we're, and we're doing it in conjunction with the Springfield Partnership, Springfield Avenue Partnership, who are really gung-ho about it. And they bring the whole town into it. And they've listed us on all of their PR, and we've, we've crossed pollinated with, with the websites, so it's, it's really a great thing. It's, a big, it's going to be a big thing. And we are lucky enough we have some of the pieces that are going to be in the show. And the signature piece, which is yours, Clara, as curator, uh, mm -hmm. is, is really remarkable, as was your quilt in the last exhibit. The this piece is beautiful. goes back to uh, 1987. Uh, I did not have cancer then, however, I did paint the, that from a model, and I abstracted the very breast that 10 years later I had cancer in. And I think that's, you know, when we talk about there being other beings out there, which I do believe anyway, um, there is somebody else out there because she's sitting behind me now. And you met Cynthia, I know, through doing various shows. I met uh, Cynthia many years ago, maybe 20-some-odd yeah. years ago. Oh, yes, many, many years ago. Yeah. But I'm, you're too young for that, so we're not even going to go there. But, <laughs> but you've also, you've done a piece from the last time here that's on our set, which I really love. Yes, it's the, your book. the artist book about uh, sort of a river that runs through your life and you're, everything's going fine, and then all of a sudden you have these cancer cells attacking you and your whole life is chaos. The title of the piece is Chaos. And then you go through radiation and chemotherapy and all the treatments, all the sorrow, and finally you come out in the end with joy because the cells have been beaten back. 
and okay. that's the message of survival. And then the piece behind Okay, the one here, here I've one. moved on to empowerment. Uh, it's about um, a woman warrior, and I looked up a warrior, and up came the Amazons, Amazon women warriors. So I was thinking, oh, that is really a good symbol because they, in order to fight, had to uh, alter or sometimes remove part of their breasts so that they could shoot the bow and arrow. So I have a symbol of that up there with shooting the arrow. And, uh, and it says woman warrior. Right a here. woman warrior, right. And so it's just the empowerment of women to just fight this and to, because they're really just destroyed when they lose part of themselves. And I just hope that it will give encouragement for people who are afflicted by this dread disease that they can be empowered. And that's really, that's quite a message. I would tell you. I'm, I know that I have a good friend who's also an ovarian cancer survivor. There are not many of those. And it was through pure will and good nutrition and a lot of positive thinking. And one of the ways, I'm sure, at least for you, Clara, is expression through your art has helped to some extent. Oh, well, through the art. Okay. okay. I think a happy person has got to be an artist, or an artist is always a happy person. But I thought they were always the tortured they, soul. Well, yeah, no? we could argue about that. Okay, okay. <laughs> That's another show. And like you some said. of us, right, some of us can't see color either, but I won't go into that. <laughs> uh, but anyway, Larry, I think what part you have that's pretty interesting here, besides the sculptural piece that's there, everybody knows you for your interesting formations and using different materials. Mm -hmm. I think one time it looked like hula hoops. It wasn't. It was tubes of some kind. PVC. Now you went. Now you've graduated to foam. Well, I haven't, I haven't forgotten the PVC. This is just another, another material that I'm using, another series. And uh, so, you know, one doesn't cancel out the other. I'm doing both simultaneously. All right. I, we, don't want, <coughs> we don't want the pipes to feel bad, so we'll keep them in <laughs> right. the situation. But, you know, and I'm wondering if that's really, is it, in your mind, what is your statement from that piece? Well, that, that's just a... a uh, a humorous, whimsical kind of uh, piece, and uh, it just you know speaks to the creative imagination. So when you're talking about artists and uh, the positive kind of message that artists can project, you're really talking about somebody who is a creative individual who can do something, whether or not it's writing or sculpture or painting. And the, 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 the actual you know, process of doing it, it is an affirmation of who you are as an individual. It's a human affirmation. I think that can be said for all sorts of artwork and all sorts of artists. I better write that down now before I leave. That's too sage for <laughs> that me. That yeah, was, that was, that that was yeah, I, 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 I want a tape of uh, the program because I don't think I can remember yeah, what right, I said. Okay. <laughs> well, well, these, are the, these are the kinds of subjects that are brought up in my Contemporary Artist uh, Forum. Thank you so much. I was wondering when you it's were going to get It's a great that. segue because, okay. we, you know, I run this Contemporary Artist Forum and we have, we have an exhibition and, and there, it's a group of 20 artists and it's very, very creative, and we talk about this kind of thing all the time, and, and, and art issues come up, and these are wonderful artists who all have, you know, full-time jobs. They get up in the morning, and they go to work, they come home, and they make art. And the point of that is that when I first met Michael, there were like five or six within the group, and then when I joined, when he asked me to join, suddenly it became what it is today, and now there's a waiting list, and that's all Michael. I think it's all Michael's doing. It's art. It's art doing. It's, it's the art. art. It's, 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 well, it's, well, it's art. It's doing it, but <laughs> it's, yeah. it's you who brought the Thank people you. in, and right. little by little by little, the reputation of what we do and what we exhibit has brought people in, and it's because we discuss and critique honestly. Right. We yeah, don't yeah. just say, "Oh, that's a pretty little." That's interesting. Right. Well, that's, that's a pretty good one. I'm going to remember that. That's too. a pretty right. little painting, right. isn't it? It gets very vicious. It, it, gets, yeah. it, it gets pretty hard. I don't to know. Work. Really, I think when you employ, employ the passion for the subject matter 
uh, such as everybody's gathered round. And I don't know how many artists are on exhibit this year. How many are part of your show? 20. We had about 20 some odd, didn't we? In the Contemporary Artist yeah. Forum show, yeah, and we're this talking one about, coming and up, this one coming up, how many, how many uh, people? Somewhere between 26, 28. Okay. Wow. So that's a big call. That's a big collection yeah. of artists <clears> coming <throat> forward. <clears throat> and I've, I've seen some of the group shows, and it's always wonderful. Somehow they all sort of go. Yeah. <laughs> I'm never quite sure, but with all the different medium used, et cetera. When you were wanting to curate the show, Clara, were you looking for something? Did you co-curate, or, or were you... Really, were you the real one? Okay. So I know sometimes you have helpful people. We have oh, to mention Vicki Parker, Vicki Parker, Vicki well, Parker. Well, I would like Thank you. Well, yes, wait a minute. You. you can't do anything on your own. And if it weren't for someone like Cynthia and Vicki, uh, uh, I could not have gotten it done. There's just and no Larry. way. Well, Larry, and Michael. Yes. Everybody. I said everybody. <laughs> everybody. And everyone. Everyone. Particu but particularly the, the two gals who did a lot of the legwork and the going back and forth and doing the labels and the cards. Larry did the cards, but there's so much to be done in a show. It's not just, we're going to have a show and you know, do me a pretty little painting. We're, yeah. we're dealing with very creative people and um, you know, evidence of that is uh, the jewelry that Clara <laughs> yeah. is wearing, yeah. which she made, but is, you know, I've seen a lot of her jewelry and uh, it's extraordinary. It's a very well, creative person. And this is yes. some of the most extraordinary stuff that I have seen in, in a long time. And I'm talking about, you know, whether or not you go to the Newark Museum or gift shop. This is really gorgeous work. She uses, Thank you. <laughs> she uses creativity for sure. But, you know, Clara, what I guess I really wanted to know is how did you decide? Did people say, I want to, and then they send you a sample? No, I mean, I, I have two I, minutes I, I, for I, this I, segment. So I here. called people and asked them. I said, I want you to have a breast cancer show. I'd like you to be a part of it. And everyone said yes. That was five years ago when I asked those people. This year I asked pretty much the same people, but then there are people who are still asking, can they be in it? But we just don't have the room. Okay, we don't so want to crowd it's limited space, in. Yeah. yeah, and yeah. so they were all asked to submit a piece based Every, on the theme was, of yeah. healing, health, being a survivor. breast cancer, yes. being surviving. Being um, and being aware of it. Aware. An awareness, awareness piece. Right. Okay. Aware. And then, so did you get slides in the mail? or how No. Did you get JPEGs on the no. Yeah, internet? No. How did you decide? I trusted the people involved. She right. knows the people in and the work, work, and so... I work with them. We see each other every other week. And so you have an opportunity as the curator to kind of see what the work is that they're putting out. Yeah, and I wanted to get the other cancers out there as well. You know, Michael's dad, my grandson, who died in August at the age of 22. There are other cancers, and we have to become aware of all that's out there and, and, and make our best effort to do something about it. And yep. continue the fight. And while we're speaking of continuing, we're going to take a moment, and then we're going to come back and talk some more uh, about the mission and methodology and how this all came to be. Can so I say one thing before No, we go. because we want you to save it. We're coming right back. Don't go away. You got to come back and hear Clara. Hi, this is former Governor Tom Kane. I answered the Jersey call to service. Now you can too. Join me and thousands of people from all corners of New Jersey in making the positive changes we need. With only a couple of hours, you can learn how to bring solutions that will cut government waste and improve the quality of life in your hometown. Answer the Jersey call to service. Go to jointhecampaign.com. And welcome back. Nancy Heinz Glazer with a wonderful group of folks honoring 2010 Breast Cancer and Artist View exhibit at 1978 Art Center in Maplewood. And I'm going right back to you. Claire, I cut you off before the break, and we'll talk in just a minute. But <laughs> I wanted to talk to you because as a guy, how did it feel for you to participate in this? Uh, you, you do abstract well, works. I, I, don't, I don't necessarily see a breast in there. No. Uh, and, you know, um, 
but how does it feel to be part of this whole it, it, it's, it's fantastic. Piece of it? I mean, to be, Larry was talking about passion before, and to be passionate about something is what I think a lot of artists experience in their lives and in, in their art making process. When someone is affected by cancer, it's a, it's a terrible, terrible thing. And, and when a life leaves this world and you experience that because of a disease like this, there's something that happens to you, to you as an individual that makes you aware of, of this. I mean, it, it's a very intense thing and anybody who has experienced it knows it. So what you try to do is you try to make sense of it in your work. And with, with me, in my work, what I did here was I, I did a painting. This was the first painting I did after my dad died. And it's called Fire and Light. And, and what you, what the sense that I had was that there's this fire that everybody has in them. And then that fire goes away, and then there's the light. And I don't know, nobody knows what the light is, but it's, it's there, it's something. And to be able to experience that and, and see somebody go from one place to another, physically see them do that, is very powerful. And I think art can, can get that power through and communicate that to people. It's transformative, really yeah. great art and is healing. transformative. And healing, and healing. very healing. <clears throat> yeah, and <clears throat> as a nurse also, I certainly know what you're talking about. I've been with many people in that transition yeah. and experienced it myself as well in my own family. Um, so when you, that's a pretty deep emotion and deep feeling. Very deep. Being able to put that somewhere, whether it's in music or art or literature, poetry, dance, I find is amazing, and that's why the show is so exceptionally fun. I just come here and have a great time, and I feel like the most blessed person on the planet. I don't, actually, we're blessed because we have you, okay. and not, not too many, not not too many people, which is true. Not too many people in New Jersey do what you are doing for us as uh, as a. Uh, I was going to say organization, but that's a very bad word. Think of a word for me. As, uh, as a, a promotion group. and and uh, projection of, of yes. all of the you're, you're uh, you know citizens. It's like you know citizens television. It's like grassroots uh, expression by you know people who are in the community who are offering a lot to the community like you do, and you give them the and opportunity. Who else is doing it but you? Well, we are lucky, I think, because we have so many. I could never run out. I could do every one a day and never run out. And I think actually we, a long time ago, 1998, I think I started the show, gosh knows, I can't remember exactly. Uh, but I think everybody wasn't quite sure. Everybody knew it was a, a, something his time has come, but uh, who knew it, I'd still be here. But that goes to the testament of the art and artist. And because of the gifts of the artist, we have such a wonderful, vital two towns. And, and the surrounds were loaded. Um, I, and I think that what you bring in this particular show, Clara and crew, is acknowledgement that art can be used to do many things, besides right. communicate, besides heal, besides helping people be transformed or outside themselves. Uh, it, it speaks a whole other language, and you reach and teach people differently through mm -hmm. the visual art medium or dance. The um, one thing, I just want to, you just made me think of this, the one thing that happened after 9-11 was the music. And the music brought everybody together and what people did after 9-11 was they came out of their homes in New York and they started to sing. And that was transformative. I mean, and, and, and that was the art of the moment that helped people deal with, with the tragedy. And I know, you know, one of the interesting things that the artists also do besides being amazing people, great human beings, always thinking about the planet or for the most part, worried about whether it's acid free mat and Constantly conscious, am I showing that animal right? Am I painting him right? I mean, just the meticulous attention to, to be accurate, not only in what they're portraying, but their real expression. Is that what I'm really, really feeling? But they also have an opportunity to educate, and that's one of the things that's happening that I love uh, mm -hmm. about this exhibit. Segway you have Dr. somebody famous. Dr. Ruddy, yeah. Right. Dr. Ruddy, well, tell us this, about we, Dr. Ruddy. Well, it, it, you know, I have the privilege of working with uh, Dr. Kathleen T. Ruddy, who's a breast cancer surgeon and the founder of the Breast Health and Healing Foundation. And she will be appearing at the exhibition on the 23rd, the uh, reception, talking about prevention and her mission. And in addition, 
she will be bringing along the pink boots, which is part of a project. I have a picture here of Dr. Ruddy. If we can get uh, zero in on this without any reflections, it would be great. She recently went to Egypt to attend a conference, a breast cancer conference, and she brought the pink boots with her. And here she is in front of the uh, pyramids <laughs> wearing the pink boots. Um, on the 23rd, the pink boots, these same pink boots that were you know, seen here in Egypt will be at 1978 and everyone will have the opportunity to put the pink boots on and be photographed with them. They will go, the pictures will go up on our website, uh, breasthealthandhealing.com. So this is a great opportunity to hear somebody who's a an extraordinary, a specialist. Mm -hmm. yes. um, I, don't, I forget if I said that she, she has a practice associated with the Claremont Medical Facility in Belleville. Which is part of the whole... Uh, St. Barnabas, Thank part you. of St. Barnabas. She is a you know, tireless worker on behalf of um, people with breast cancer. And she is an extraordinary person. It's, it's very, very important to see her speak. Well, so right, about 3 o'clock on the 23rd. Okay. And so when people don't, if this is seen later, and we hope it shows for a while, because really the shows we do tend not to be only about events, uh, so that when they come and go, they're gone. That's not what we try to do. We try to make the message bigger so that somebody may watch the show who needs help or has been diagnosed or right. wants to contact right. somebody, right. and exactly. that's what I always feel. Mm -hmm. See, the Susan so. B. Corman, uh, I looked into that. Why do they get the, the, the information and the monies that they get? And it's because, exactly because of the money they do get, because they have that kind of money behind them. And that's what I think that eventually Nancy may get if she continues with all of us doing Absolutely. something. And Dr. Ruddy, because Dr. Be Ruddy nice. is going to be part of that. Right. We, we need yeah. another, another Susan B. Corman Right. Uh, to, to, to put that money forward. And well, we all agree. Been, yeah. And that's yeah. a lot happened. of it. It's right. There have, been some, yeah, some there have been some missteps yeah. that have occurred. You know, the most uh, recent ones, well, two most recent ones is, well, actually, Susan B. Komen uh, Foundation uh, had uh, the arrangement or the association with KFC, which was ridiculous because, you know. All right. That, okay. Social commentary. Right. Social commentary. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think that everybody understands that. And then there were some other foundations that were uh, associated with um, alcoholic beverages, which is also, you know, one of those things that you're supposed to avoid if you've had cancer. Yeah, so, so this is what I was talking about. The artists are very interested in acid-free matting and making sure that everything is done right because the quality of person who is involved in the arts understands the world a little differently, I think and pays attention to things. And see things differently. They see things, absolutely. Yes. Uh, and seers and allow us to see through their own vision. That's right. That's a, th we, right. People have said that the artists are the antenna of the race. Okay. And I, you know, and That's I've good. heard, what is it, Degas was, art is not what the artist sees, but what he makes others see. Mm -hmm. he, she. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Sorry. Picasso yes. said that yeah. art is a lie that makes us realize <clears throat> the truth. Okay. You can Anybody use that. else? Cynthia, you have a you have a smart comment for us, uh, or are you just gonna sit there and look gorgeous? A smart <laughs> comment. <laughs> smart That's comment. A, come on, <laughs> with you. Uh, yeah, no, or, just a, you know awareness. Keep keep the awareness and keep people involved. And art does do that. Gets people involved. Engages people in unique ways. <clears throat> and math and science may save the world, but only art makes it worth living there. Let's see, I'll keep going. Anyway. It's very serious. I, I, it's I a very wanted, serious pursuit. I just want to say how, how much of a crusader Clara is in this whole thing because she has really sort of picked herself up from the floor. She has <coughs> fallen apart as a result of her grandson's untimely death and has picked herself up and, and, and really gotten this thing going in a big yeah. way. And she deserves a lot of credit. Yeah, here. I would second that for yes. sure. I know. That's very, that. very extraordinary. Yeah. yeah. Double really second. Extraordinary. And it is through art. <laughs> Thank you. It is through art, art, right, Clara, that you've been able to push through some yeah, of it this. Took, it took me two it. weeks to leave the house. Uh, but I, I, I kept a journal every night and wrote him a letter. Um, 
yeah, it was it was hard, but art did do it. Okay, and we I know for a fact that the number of people who came to Wat Chong and Gilda's Club, mm -hmm. uh, and you know, 1978, the last time people were amazed. Uh, I think Gilda's Club was one of the most touching places oh, because yes. these were survivors, and they saw it differently than the general public. So somebody who's been touched is going to have a different reaction. But if you remember, they studied that every art piece so slowly. Do you I'd remember like say, that? Yeah, I do. But I'd like to say one more thing about my grandson. Please do. If I may. But, but I was just told this yesterday, I think. I think you were there. That I was told that at the home where my grandson was finally resting, 1,200 people came to see him, mm -hmm. which is phenomenal. There were people outside and around the corner meandering around just just to say goodbye to this fine 22 year old boy that's quite something well yeah, it think, really is yeah. Yeah, absolutely and i think really it's a testament to the love you share because you're talking about it and not letting it get you down and going forward and surviving in yet a whole other way we spoke about that yeah we spoke about from the hospitals uh, from his bed in my home. We spoke about that. I'm so glad so you had that a, moment. You know, I have a minute and a half left. Is there something anybody wants to say I'd about I'd like to this? say something what Michael said okay. earlier. Michael said earlier about his painting and describing his painting. And when I was asked by some guys or some males, what should we title our painting? What, I, what should we paint? And what I said to them, it wasn't the painting, but the title of the painting that gave the painting a life. And that's what I, what Michael just said, and I truly believe that. It's it, it's the poetry that works. Yeah, you know, makes it work. Well, so what do you do with Untitled? But anyway, I've seen a lot of good work that has that too. But I guess they've just put it all out when they put it on untitled the canvas. Untitled opens you untitled. up for conversation. Ah. Right. Well, there's always something to be said, even if I'm confused by it. But I want to tell you guys, thank you again for keeping up the fight and doing it again, repeating this. Um, and I'm we thank the, the Pink Boot Lady, Dr. Ruddy. We thank each of you for helping to educate, inform, uplift, enlighten, inspire, and continue on. Thank you so yep. much, and thanks for having this exhibit. Thank you, Clara, for thank curating you, it. And thank you for watching us. By the way, take a look around you at the art that's in your life, and you may not even know it. Thanks for joining us.